A visitor? Could it be? Oh, I'm so glad you've come. Is it to meet me? No, no. It couldn't be. You didn't come for me. You came for a tale of the louds, didn't you? Hmph. <laughs> Fine. I'll tell you a tale, all right. A tale when they first met me. Well, except for that Lucy girl. She's a good disciple of mine. It begins with Lincoln at the sitting room fiddling with a video game. And he was doing quite well, in fact. He was doing better than he ever had done. Consequently, he didn't want th this golden streak of his to dissolve. So he kept his business away from his older sisters as best as he could. Especially from Lori. She had been hounding the family for the whereabouts of her phone. They toiled away for an answer to give, but none could be found. Stoking her already blistering fury. Now Lincoln had ears, quite good ones at that. So it was no surprise to him that Lori would eventually come barging into his session with a most asinine request. She didn't utter a word as she loomed close behind. She had no need. No, Lori, I don't have your phone, Lincoln began. Lincoln, I've looked everywhere for it, except here, Lori uttered in brimming resentment. Then look again, Lincoln retorted spitefully. Look, Lincoln, I don't have time for it again. Bobby might be calling me right now, and I wouldn't know. Lori reasoned it desperately. Sucks for you, Lincoln dismissed it unsympathetically as he unpaused his game, jumping back into his little world, an act of defiance that Lori would not be having. So she stormed directly into Lincoln's view. Lincoln? Lori? Lincoln mimicked ducking his head around Lori to face the screen. Lincoln, you got five seconds to either get up or that thing goes off. Lori threatened it. Whatever. Lincoln dismissed it stubbornly, keeping his eyes on the prize, consequently laying the final straw on Lori's back. Really? You want that? Fine. I'll do it right now. Lori proclaimed, reaching under the TV set she grasped it tight on the largest cord connected to his gaming console. Wait, no, please. Lincoln beckoned, but unfortunately for him, he was simply too late, Lori proudly announced, much to Lincoln's chagrin, as he looked on in mourning at the guts of the gaming console and the TV's lack of signal. He collapsed onto his knees, devastated. You monster! Sorry Link, but next time, maybe do what I say, okay? Lori smirked from up high, burning up Lincoln's distraught shock, leaving nothing but flaming hot hatred in its wake. Do you have any idea how long it took for me to get up to that part? Suddenly, right at that moment, Lincoln and Lori froze solid, as Lori felt something deep in her pocket vibrating, to which Lori smacked her forehead in realization. Of course, I left it on silent. You're kidding me, Lincoln uttered, stuck in a stupor above shock and awe. Yeah. Well, um, Lori paused it, taking in Lincoln's dumbfounded look. Well, look on the bright side. At least we learned something, right? Lori suggested, but Lincoln didn't answer verbally. Rather, his painted blank stare told Lori all she needed to know. Actually, I'll leave that part up to you, Lori added, slowly but steadily leaving the scene of the crime and Lincoln alone to rife as he kneeled over on his side, bundled up in a ball of defeat, 
That was until that disciple of mine appeared from behind the couch. Hi, Lincoln. Ah! Lincoln shrieked, bounding onto his feet in fright, till he met with Lucy's ebony bangs. How did you even do that anyway? Practice, I suppose, Lucy answered with an unsure shrug, adding to Lincoln's suspicion. Practice? Like sneaking? Lucy almost gave an answer, but relented at the last second and shook her head. Magic tricks? Lincoln asked unsurely, to which Lucy didn't give an answer. Lincoln groaned internally at that. It's magic, isn't it? Not entirely. Her lips curved into a barely noticeable grin. But it plays its part. Lincoln raised a brow in confusion. Then, what's that other bit? I'd rather not go in depth, but let's just say if I wanted something to happen, then I'd go to my friend and put in a little favor. Lucy explained, making Lincoln purse his lips in intrigued thought. Just keep it small though, Lucy disclaimed. Small, huh? Lincoln repeated, turning his head behind him, facing the stars, hearing Lori already on her phone. Is revenge small enough to ask? Lincoln inquired. Tch. And here I thought you didn't have a dark side, Lucy complimented, making Lincoln rise a brow in confusion before widening his eyes in realization. Oh, no, not, not like that kind of revenge. Just enough to, uh, I don't know, get Lori to stop being so airheaded. Hmm, I think that can be arranged. Come nightfall. I had already heard Lucy's request and accepted it wholeheartedly as the plot she devised was so devious I could never resist. And that plot, of course, was to take her to a place where all Lori knew was not. So I plucked her out of bed and into the palm of my hand. Of course, she didn't know that. And without that clarity, fear gouged out whatever tender warmth was left as she gazed all around at the everlasting abyss of space. She begged and pleaded to know where she was, getting her estranged answer at the sight of earth close enough that she could only hope to grasp it within her delicate hand. I could feel that she wasn't sound of mind at the sight of her home so far away, so I held my children's praying hands back, at least for now. Instead, I let her delirium spread further as she surveyed the decaying grey crater, speckled landscape. At first, she believed it to be the moon since she was close enough for that to be a possibility. But a closer look told her that this ground far more resembled it flush than rock. Noting that the ground beneath her pulsed, breathing even, having her unwavering fright over her quivering shoulders, she almost fell into what felt to be the edge of yet another crater. However, this was no mere crater. This was an entire canyon of hidden viscera, massive, expansive blue pulsating veins carrying my children's drink. Following the veins up led her eyes to greater ravines, ravines so deep they revealed one of my many bones. A sight that made her think maybe this wasn't just something but rather someone. Of course, I alone wasn't the sole living being here as Lori herself quickly found as she spotted a pink blotchy creature suckling its drink vehemently. Narrowing her eyes, Lori spotted another, and another, countless more, lined along my vein. All of them digging their nailless, elongated fingers into my vein synchronously. 
cupping their hands in wake of the blood spilling forth that they drank with their toothless mouths freely. Lori fancied herself mad, for the sight before her was so maddening that Lori simply couldn't draw any other conclusions that mania finally overtaken her, but this was no illusion. As staring right back at her were all my blind children, yet not at all senseless, for they all managed to ogle Lori ravenously as fluid trickled down their pink bare chins. Until suddenly the flush underneath Lori's feet tore and split, the craters behind Lori pushing forth like rapidly exploding balloons, madly scraping against my decayed, fraying skin. Whereas all that Lori could do was watch on in despair, as the horde of millions on my neurotic arm quickly turned it into trillions upon trillions of terrifying, steadfast forces of savage instinct, utilizing their blunt claws to scale over each, each crater in their wake. Looking back one final time, almost every crater had finally been ripped away. Waves upon waves of them closing in so closely upon poor Lori that they ripped and tore each other in two just to get to Lori faster. She didn't know where she had gone wrong. She just wanted a rest, not this. And truth be told, tis a pity, for I wanted to study her this close for just a little while longer. Oh well, let the horde quench their thirst, for they had waited long enough, I thought, as beyond hundreds of them grasped at Lori's frail form, hacking and slashing at whatever fresh fluid they could sink their claws into, indulging themselves in a brand new meal. In truth, I could have kept her there, left her till my offsprings rent her flush down to the very bone if I so wished. But if I did that, then my children would never return to my flush. Lori shot up from her bed, drenched in sweat. She darted her eyes around her bedroom, finding that she was all alone in the midday rays. She looked under her clothes, trying to discover any claw marks. None were seen, of course. She knew she wouldn't find any. It was just a silly nightmare. Then how is it that she could recall every graphic detail? Slept well? Lucy appeared just out of Lori's view, much to Lori's fright. Gah! Lori jumped back into her bed sheets, darting her eyes around trying to find how she got inside despite the locked door. Never mind how I got in. Lucy dismissed it callously, astounding Lori's shaken mind. D did you just read my mind? Lori raised an accusatory finger. No, you guys are always wondering how I get around, is all. Lucy explained it, putting Lori's suspicion a little more at ease, though that didn't say much. Okay then, Lori replied as she furrowed her suspecting brow. So, did you sleep well? Lucy pressed. I guess. Ah, uh, sorry. I just had this super weird nightmare. Lori began. To which Lucy took a seat beside Lori. Do tell me, Lucy encouraged. After the end of Lori's retelling, Lucy stood up from where she sat. Lucy wished, pacing out of the room whilst bearing the slyest grin I or Lucy had ever seen, only adding to Lori's ever-growing anxiety. Later on in the day, Lori and Lincoln collided when they were both attempting to go through the stairs. Oh, um, sorry Link. I can't talk right now, sorry. Lori apologized in quite a perturbed tone. Hey, what what's the rush? Is something wrong? No, Lincoln. Everything's fine. Just... Uh, look, I'm sorry about yesterday. I should have, like, thought before I did all that. But that's not the only thing that's bothering me. 
Lincoln understood her shame for yesterday, but what was the other thing? It's not, no. Uh, can you talk to Lucy for me? She's acting weird today. As soon as Lori mentioned Lucy's name, it all just about fell into place for the snow-haired boy and he aimed his crosshair at Lucy's door. Yeah, I think that can be arranged, Lincoln obliged, much to Lori's elatement. You will? Oh my gosh, thank you, Linky. Lori thanked with quite the smothering hug. You're welcome, sis. Lincoln got out just barely. Oh, eh, sorry. Lori let go in slight embarrassment as he came crashing to his knees. You're not mad about yesterday, right? Um, Lincoln sat in thought for a moment as he caught his breath. Let's just let sleeping dogs lie, yeah? Yeah, Lori agreed, the silence drawing Lincoln's eyes towards Lucy's dreaded door. Welp, go look in there, twerp. Lori smirked as she ruffled his hair is before going on her way. Hey, what did we just agree on? Lincoln chided playfully as Lori slipped it out of view, setting his sights back to Lucy's door. His brow furred in determination as he approached and turned the door knobs open, being greeted by Lucy lying flat on her bed. Ah, uh, welcome, brother dearest, Lucy greeted with a knowing smirk. Much to Lincoln's confoundment. Wha- what? Uh, look, I know you're doing something to Lori, and you better tell me what that thing was. I did merely as you asked. That is, of course, making her not so airheaded, as you put it, Lucy relayed. Well, yeah, I know that, but what did you do? Lincoln bellowed impatiently, but Lucy just smirked at his ear. Nothing. I just call it in a favor from a friend. But that's about it from me, Lucy confessed. Merely fueling Lincoln's growing wrath. Alright, you better give me a straight answer right now or I'm getting mom up here. How about you just thank me for what I've done for you and then go back to that little game of yours. Besides, if you get mom here, then I'll be forced to incriminate you for your involvement in all of this as well, hmm? Lincoln wanted to further argue with my disciple, but even his stubborn nature saw the frivolity in doing such. Uh, fine, you win. I'll leave you be. Lincoln gave in, carrying himself out of Lucy's room. Yes, Linky. Let sleeping dogs lie. Lucy grimmed eerily at Lincoln as he closed Lucy's door behind him. Will you ever tell them of me? Not yet. Not until they've all borne witness to you, at least in the same way Lori has.